Hello everyone, good afternoon and welcome to the open day for the MA in Internet Equalities at the Creative Computing Institute. My name is Georgina and I work as Creative Learning Producer at CCI. And today we're here to share all about the MA in Internet Equalities course. And in order to do that, we've got with us course leader, Dr. Pixcraft, and a current student at the course, Lexi, who's part of the first cohort of students that will be graduating from this MA at CCI. To give you an overview of how the session is structured, we're going to start talking about CCI first and all the spaces and facilities and resources that are available to students. Then we're going to share an overview of the social mission and the public program of workshops and events at CCI. And lastly, PIX will talk us through the approach units and content that the MA course entails. Right after that, I'm going to invite Lexi to join us live as well, so we can jump straight onto the Q&A section where we will try and go through all the questions that we've received from all of you. I would also like to encourage you to um, just send us through any questions or comments during the session on the YouTube chat, and we'll do our best to cover it all during this Q&A section in the end. Also, very important, if you have difficulties following along the session, know that the entire session will be recorded and re-uploaded on CCI's YouTube channel with English closed captions. So please don't worry if you miss any detail because you'll have the opportunity to catch up at your own pace after the event as well. So let's get this started. I'm gonna start, as I mentioned, playing a video that my colleague Chloe Dunn recorded, which will tell you a little bit more about the CCI spaces, facilities and resources, and also the campus local area. Thanks everyone for joining us today. We'll see you in a second. Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to show you around the campus and share some of the facilities and resources available to CCI students. The Creative Computing Institute is located at UAL's Peckham Road campus in Campbell, South East London. From 2022, we'll have two new sites open in the Campbell Peckham area. The Greencoat building opening in January will be used for teaching, technical and office spaces. Eagle Wharf will open in September and will provide a new halls of residence building for UAL students alongside a community outreach, events and exhibition space. Camberwell is a lively and unique area of South East London with good transport links to all parts of the city, including Brixton and Dalston. And we have three halls of residence that are all within walking distance of the CCI. The local area is home to a thriving art scene, which hosts a variety of art galleries and artist studios that students, graduates and staff work and exhibit in. On site, we have two galleries, Camberwell Space and the Students' Union Gallery, with the South London Gallery right next door. Arts organisation Bull Tendencies runs an annual programme of live events and commissions, as well as hosting Frank's Bar on the Roof, with some of the best London views in the city. So here I've just named a few, but there are so many more galleries, cultural hubs and recreational spaces for you to explore that are right on our doorstep. To find out more about the local area, visit the Living in London page on the UAL website. On campus, we have many facilities and spaces for you to use. Our canteen has lots of food and drink options for everyone, with bike storage situated just outside. We have an art shop that offers affordable art supplies and whose staff can help advise you on the best materials for your projects. Also on site, we have an amazing library supported by a dedicated CCI librarian who oversees the subject area of creative computing. She ensures the library stays up to date with the books, periodicals, databases and other resources you need to complete your studies. The Learning Zone is part of the library and is situated on site in the Gardens Halls of Residence building. It's open 24 hours a day, meaning that you can study at a time that best suits you. And they have a range of equipment for you to use and laptops available to learn. To find out more about the spaces and facilities available to you, please visit wiki.cci.arts.ac.uk. Now let's take a look around. The CCI is located across the fourth and fifth floors in Block B at Peckham Road and is very accessible to students with various needs. Our lecture theatre is in the basement of Block B. This space is used for lectures as well as events. 
The fourth floor is used mostly for postgraduate teaching. Here, we have a new seminar room and a room which will house our laser cutter and some 3D printers too. The fifth floor is the heart of CCI. Our kitchen is a communal space as well as a learning space. At lunchtime, it becomes a social hub for CCI folks to share lunch together. And during classes, it's a quiet working space. We have pods which can be used when they are not booked as quiet spaces to work and a space to have your tutorials. Alongside are three classrooms, two seminar rooms and one high-end computer suite fitted with some of the latest technology, including 24 high-spec computers with NVIDIA RTX 2080 graphics cards and 4K monitors for working on projects ranging from machine learning to 3D rendering and video editing. Additionally, many of these computers can be accessed remotely from home after hours to enable access to specialist software or the high performance for rendering or machine learning work. We also operate a laptop locker system where students can borrow a laptop to use within the CCI spaces. The physical computing lab is a space for students to do all of their electronics. Here, we have everything students will need for soldering and testing things out. We have hundreds of different components which are available for you to use. There is also a sewing machine, embroidery machine, computerised knitting machine and 3D printers. This is just a glimpse of some of the amazing facilities and resources you'll have access to while studying at CCI. Hello again, I hope that you found that useful. Now, a lot of students are also interested in finding out more about the opportunities, workshops and events that they would have the chance to join when studying at CCI. Therefore, the next video I'm going to uh, play will give you an overview about CCI's public program, what are the research themes at the Institute and also the social mission that underpins the events and opportunities that we share with UL students, CCI students and the general public. I hope you enjoyed and we'll see you right after that. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Georgina Cadevilacano, and I am the creative learning producer at CCI. And my role focuses on planning and delivering CCI's public program, which I will briefly talk about in the next few minutes. Our public program is a platform that offers accessible learning experiences, workshops, and events to literally anyone interested in getting a taste about creative competing or deepen their knowledge in the field. This program of activities is underpinned by CCI's three key research themes, which are creativity, machine learning and AI, human computer interaction and platforms, big data and digital citizenship. The public program also responds to CCI's social mission aimed at integrating computational thinking with approaches to fairness and equality for the UL community and beyond. Therefore, all our programs have a strong focus on diversity in technology, digital inclusion and digital entrepreneurship. We are committed to connecting students, practitioners and researchers with an international community of artists and technologists and where everyone can explore creative technology through fun and friendly and most of all accessible spaces. To give you a sense of what you have the chance to take part in while you're studying at CCI, I will just share quickly some of the programs that we've run in the past. At Technology and Powers Intensive Workshop and Public Symposium last year, we learned about human rights, internet technology regulations and alternative techno futures with Dr. Pixcraft and an amazing group of researchers, artists, activists and advocates. At Tech for All conference, CCI staff members shared how we can creatively reimagine the way we use and design new technologies to create platforms, interactions, experiences, spaces and products that bring people together in community, respect, beauty and solidarity. At Querying Voice AI Intensive Course, a mix of UAL students explored how voice interfaces could be designed to support the embodied well-being of trans and non-binary people. And finally, they prototyped SIP, a voice interface that connects trans and non-binary users to media created by their community. 
And last but not least, at Tech Yard, we keep creating a safe space for young kids in the local area of Peckham and Camberwell to learn about creative computing with Jasmine Morris and many other CCI staff and students. These are just a few of the activities that we've been running over the last few years, but there's a lot of free, accessible, and interesting content in our YouTube channel, which I would love to invite you to check out at some point. For this next academic year, just so you have a taste as well of what's going on, we're working on a lot of different activities, which will include a couple of intensive workshops that will be open to all UAL and CCI students. We will also run a fellowship program on the field of experimental human computer interaction. And there are many, many things that are on the way that we can't wait to share with you. As a CCI student, know that you will have the opportunity to be part of all these spaces and to meet other peers from across UAL and beyond. But this will be a safe space for you to explore your creative career, your creative practice alongside students coming from different courses, different levels and different programs that will for sure nurture your own views, your own perspectives and your own skill set. So I hope that this got you excited about joining CCI and we can't wait to share spaces with you in the future. Thanks a lot for your time. Goodbye for now. Hello again. I hope you found that useful as well. And now it's the time uh, to start talking about the MA in Internet Equalities, which is the reason why you're all here today. So I'm super happy to introduce you to Dr. Prix Craft, my colleague at CCI, who's a course leader at the MA and who will share with you the course approach, units and content behind the course with you. Prix, the floor is yours. Thank you, Gigi. Uh, gosh, I know that video got me excited about the CCI and, and this open day. Uh, slum, slum, good people. I'm going to talk a little bit about the MA in Internet Equalities, the structure of that program, the different units that, that form the classes in, in the degree, and also my own approach to, to designing the pedagogy of the whole program. Uh, normally, I would have made a slideshow for this kind of thing. I think that oftentimes the open days do have a kind of slideshow from the course leader, but I wanted to try to just talk a little bit less formally uh, to give you a better sense for what I'm like and therefore you know what my what my approach to the, to the course has has been like. Uh, the course itself was was designed by Dr. Charlotte Webb, who's currently uh, in a different role now at, at CCI. Uh, and I took over at the beginning of this year and have been really excited to see how how the first cohort has has been enjoying the program so far in in this first term that the MA has run. The just in terms of what what classes and units are offered, there's a really cool slate of of classes, uh, three of which now have have run to their completion and another four to go in the coming terms. There is the intersectional internets class, which I ended up uh, bringing together three different lecturers for to run uh, a series of three-day workshops on imaginaries and thinking about how imaginaries that are, that are projected by either companies or the state or counter imaginaries by artists and activists uh, shape the way we think about the present and the future, as well as labor issues in, in technology uh, and surveillance and state surveillance and the interactions between uh, industry, the corporate corporate industry in the state. After intersectional internets, there's methods for ethical technology development, which this term uh, we've been we've been doing as a largely a kind of peer learning and exploration of of, of individual practice, uh, giving each of the students a, a couple theories of ethical technology development or methods of ethical technology development to be to be really doing a deep dive into and then exploring that in in combination with with a kind of personal journey through developing a, a manifesto for your practice uh, to to see and understand how how would you apply these different state-of-the-art methods for ethical technology development in in your own work or in the work that you're you're hoping to take on in the future uh, the third course in the first term is feminist coding practices, which is the most 
uh, kind of computational class, I think, in, in the entire degree, really. Uh, the idea of that class is to go from potentially knowing nothing about programming, never have an open uh, computer terminal to, to write down a line of code, to being able to, to do at least a little bit of something with uh, in, in this year, we've been working with JavaScript and, and probably will continue to do that next year as well. Uh, and trying to do, trying to take on that uh, programming education from uh, as feminist of a perspective as, as we can we can get it, balancing the demands of the programming learning with, with the kind of theoretical considerations for the class. Next term, we'll be looking at computational inequalities, which is going to explore uh, AI bias and AI and inequalities in information systems more broadly construed, such as around accessibility issues and broader economic inequality uh, from hopefully the perspective of multiple different industries. Uh, and that, that I'm hoping to bring in a number of guest lectures from hopefully someone from government, maybe an activist, an artist, uh, someone working in corporate tech ethics, and get all of these different perspectives on computational inequality from, from, the, from the views of folks in different, in, in different sectors. Uh, and that coupled with the, the kind of second most computationally intensive unit of, of the whole degree program, which is getting a little bit into the weeds with learning how to run some machine learning algorithms, again, using the same language as feminist coding practices. So this year it'll be JavaScript, probably, probably the same next year, unless we get feedback to, to change that maybe to Python. Uh, simultaneously, next term will be designing for responsible innovation, which I'm hoping to take in the direction of thinking about theories of social change and how an understanding of different theories of social change can, can shape your own practice and can help to also think about or organizational strategies and personal how, how your own personal work can fit into into broader strategies for, for social change and human rights and computation, which is actually a, a course that, uh, or a unit that goes across two terms and will be similar to intersectional internets where I'm hoping to have a, a few, probably three or four lecturers giving short workshops that kind of offer cases uh, and views into different views into human rights and computation from the perspective of different really detailed case studies from experts on those cases. And finally, platform potentials, which currently I've been talking with, with an exciting organization from the United States about trying to work together with uh, on, on that class. And if, if that if all goes well with platform potentials and, and that works out, then that'll look especially at uh, radical black theory and how black activists have been using platforms and uh, also resisting things like disinformation on platforms that's specifically targeted towards black activists in, in the United States and around the world. Uh, so that'll be really exciting if that, if that gets off the ground as planned and hopefully we'll be able to continue to replicate that in, in future years as well. In terms of the pedagogical approach that, that I take and what I, what I try to bring to the, to the course personally, I, it's, it's kind of, um, it's kind of silly. I feel like I feel silly to have this as my point of inspiration since it's from such a different context. If if you've if you've read it yourself, but I take a lot of inspiration from uh, the book, the classic, Pedagogy of the Oppressed, uh, which is is for those of you who haven't read it, uh, kind of memoir or notes from the field of a of a teacher who was doing kind of decolonial education, I think in Brazil 50 or so years ago, um, way before decolonial education was, was a cool thing in the UK or whatever. Um, and Frere, the author of Pedagogy of the Oppressed, writes about how there was a need to shift from a banking model of education, which is kind of taking the knowledge that a teacher has or supposing that a knowledge has, the teacher has more knowledge than a student and transmitting that knowledge from teacher to student to one that Fur calls a 
problem posing model of education, which aims to have the students and teachers in a dialogue with each other, uh, the teacher being the role of facilitator and posing problems in the world or problems in society for themselves and for the students to reflect on together and, and to learn from each other about. And a big part of that uh, and a big part of what I see many of the, of the different units in the degree program working towards is having an understanding of your own oppression, my own oppression, our own oppressions, uh, as well as ways in which we might be complicit or actively uh, being oppressors in one way or another ourselves. Um, in, 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 in Islam, there's a, there's a similar kind of sentiment which uh, the prophet, peace be upon him, was, was, was said to have, to have told his followers uh, to help those who are oppressed and also help the oppressors. And he was asked, well, how are we supposed to help the oppressors? And he replied, help them by helping to stop them from oppressing. <laughs> so that's, that's, the, that's the kind of uh, perspective that, that, I, that I take to, to, to try to have the, have the course be, be welcome and inclusive to all uh, oppressed and oppressors the same. Um, in terms of what I hope that you might get out of the course, uh, I think that my ideal is for us to kind of plot and scheme together. Uh, this year, it's it's been a relatively small cohort w across the classes. There, there have been five or so people participating, and that's given me a really exciting opportunity to, to work with everyone really closely and uh, just have a lot of conversations about every student's individual interests and ambitions and trying to get somewhere with, with each and every person. And for me, what I hope that will continue to look like and, and will look like next year is trying to develop uh, both your practice and anything we might be able to, to do together in order to have everyone in the program thinking together about these ideas of, you know, manifestos for, for your own thinking, what values you want to be bringing to your work and how to actually match your actions and your work to, to the values that, that, that you want to be working towards, uh, as well as having conversations about the, the difficulties and practicalities of doing that or of wanting to do that or striving to do that. In terms of uh, the logistics of the course, there, there aren't really any prerequisites for, for joining or for applying. There isn't any coding background or background in, in technology that's necessary. We, we strive to be able to teach that from, from scratch where, where you need that. There is a mix of different learning approaches and, and teaching styles and a mix of different assessment methods from essay writing to blog writing to making artifacts, whether uh, through programming or through an artistic practice, if you, if you want to do that. And I try to offer structure for students that, that want more structure, but also offer flexibility for anyone who wants to go off and, and do something more open-ended and express your creativity to the fullest. And I think uh, I mentioned I mentioned the, the Islamic perspective that, that I've started to try to bring into my own work. Uh, a moment ago, and I'll, I'll just I'll just end this this short introduction to the degree by by sharing a little bit more about where I'm at with that, uh, because I think that getting getting that 
religious connection for me has has clarified a lot of things and has also given me ways of, of framing uh, the work that I'm doing, I think in in ways I wouldn't have expected, but I, but I think are very powerful. Uh, uh, in particular, I've started describing my occupation or perhaps my preoccupation as engaging in uh, what in Islam is called a jihad against big tech. And jihad is, it's an interesting word because it's been, it's been a bit uh, demonized by, by the press in, in the UK and the English speaking world where in Islam, it's, it's a word that just means to struggle or to struggle against oppression. Uh, and in, this, in Islam, in fact, the, the greatest jihad that anyone can participate in is the inner jihad, the jihad against yourself or the, the struggle with, with yourself. Um, I think that what, what I'm interested in is, is both that, that inner struggle of uh, you know, clarifying for myself how I want to live and living that way and the, and the struggle of doing that, as well as identifying how and where there is oppression in the world, especially insofar as that's being technologically mediated, where, where the expertise of this particular degree program will get you, uh, but also more broadly in the economic and social structures that all those technologies are intertwined with and how to resist or struggle against those structures. So thanks for listening and happy to chat about all that in a moment. Thank you, Bix, for this insightful and inspiring presentation as always. Now it's a pleasure to be welcoming Lexi into this virtual space as well. Lexi is a current student at the MA in Internet Equalities. Hi, Lexi. Hi. <laughs> Thank you for being here today. It's lovely to have you. Amazing. So as we mentioned at the beginning of the session, now we've got about 30 minutes in which we're going to be going through some questions that we've collected from the form, the sign up form, and also questions like recurring questions that we get a lot about the course. So we'll be covering these one by one, but we'll also be keeping an eye on the chat. So if there's anything specific about your situation or any doubt that you have or that arises during the session, please feel free to post it on the YouTube chat and we'll cover it as well during this next uh, 30 minutes. All right, so let's just start with the next one. As you will see, the questions will appear at the bottom of the screen in case it's easier for you to read. So the first one we've got is what mix of content on coding, activism and design will there be in the course? Do you want to take that one, Pix? <laughs> sure thing. Activism and design, I think, are present in probably every unit to a greater or lesser degree. Coding is pretty much in terms of the in terms of uh, what where we'll be teaching coding occurs in those two units, feminist coding practices and computational inequalities. Uh, for any of the for any of the classes, there you could engage in a programming project if you wanted to, to incorporate that. Um, also for, for the thesis component, the thesis project, um, that's another opportunity to, to develop your programming skills further or to use your programming skills in the, in the context of the degree program. Uh, but yeah, so the answer is all three could be a part of all of it. Uh, and activism and design are actively in the, in the curriculum for, for all the units. Thank you, Bix, for your answer. Amazing. The next one we've got. Oh, I saw Lexi had a comment there. Yeah, of course. Go ahead, Lexi. Yeah, I can also just add my experience with this. So through Pix's pedagogical approaches, this course is really what we want to make out of it. And if we want more coding, we can do more coding, we want more activism, more activism, more design, we can do more design. But also from my experience, we kind of go from zero, like not opening a computer, not coding to a bit of something, but you won't learn it all. If you want coding skills, that's something you're gonna have to do like outside a little bit of the course. 
Um, but the CCI has many resources for that. So it's a good place to be. Thank you, Lexi. That's great. Lovely. All right. So moving on, we've got another one that says, what is being included as internet technologies? Is that another one for me, Georgina? Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think that if I were to if I were to rephrase internet technologies in more kind of technical jargon from the field, I would say information technologies, which is uh, quite broad. Um, any any man made artifact that uh, is used for for communication of some kind. Um, in, in practice, the focus is, is on uh, online platforms, on uh, phone-based and uh, computer-based technologies and software, on artificial intelligence and mach machine learning-based software. And we haven't really talked about robotics, but you can imagine something like autonomous autonomous weapon systems or or uh, there has been a little bit on surveillance surveillance systems actually as well though. That's great, Pix. Lovely. Is there anything you would like to add on that front, Lexi? Nope. Amazing. So moving on. I think this next one will also be for you, Pix. So we've got this one that says, how is power being defined in the course? Well, thanks. Yeah, whoever asked this question is really going for it. Um, um, I'll, I'll start by saying that I don't think it's necessarily the most important thing to have a definition of power. I think uh, I could offer a definition that, that I've used in, in my research uh, but I think the most important thing is to be able to identify where power, however we might define it, is being uh, enacted by whom and over whom, through what tactics, and being able to dig into those cases and have a, a robust set of set of tools for investigating those cases and if if appropriate, uh, flipping power dynamic or attempting to. Thank you, Pix. That's great. Amazing. So then we've got also um, a few questions that are about the application process and you've already touch upon um, like the requirements to apply to the course Pix, but maybe just sort of overview of how the application process works for this MA would be really, really insightful. I haven't actually applied to it myself, so maybe maybe this is one for Lexi. Yeah, um, I can comment on this. So it starts really with going to these open days and thinking, is this course really right for me? Is this really something I want to do? And then I applied directly through the UIL CCI website. Um, I know you can apply through something bigger in the UK, but yeah, the process was a statement of intent and this is what is the biggest part of your application. And then your grades matter, I guess, not really. But also what you're bringing to this course is really important. It's important to think about and set your intentions before coming in this because again, um, sorry. Um, yeah, because what you want out of this course, you have to kind of know that before going in. Um, after that, it's just a bunch of forms and visas and bureaucracy, but the CCI has great staff that'll help out with that. Thank you, Lexi, for sharing your experience. That's great. 
On the same front, I believe we could also tackle this one now, um, which says, what constitutes relevant professional experience as an entry requirement for the course if the candidate lacks previous academic qualifications in a relevant subject area? First of all, I'm going to say that probably this is a question that we would uh, need to direct to the admissions team as well. But I think that maybe peaks from their experience can share if like students have been joining the course coming from different backgrounds or qualifications or if there's anything you would like to to share on that front peaks. Yeah, That'd yeah. Um, I wish that I knew all the I should, I should I should have a conversation with the program team to really get 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 into the details because I like Lexi mentioned grades. Um, I certainly hope that grades aren't aren't a factor. I think like probably the more classes you failed, the, the, the more inclined I might be to be interested in your application. Um, similarly for, for professional experience or prior academic qualifications, um, I don't know. I was talking to one colleague about like a college dropout that they know who might be interested in applying to the MA, like that's fine by me. It'll, whatever um i'm mostly interested in uh having folks in the program who are just really earnestly committed to the to the kind of values that are expressed on the on the ma information page and to to critique and to self-exploration. And uh, I think if, if that comes through clearly in your application, then, then that would be really exciting to me. Thank you, Pix. That's great. Lovely. So moving on, we've got another question about the type of projects and assignments that a student would be working on. Who would like to go with this one? Maybe Lexi, you could just share a little bit about what you've been working on this this term. That would be super cool. Yeah, so this week is actually assessment week. So it's when all our projects are due. And today I was working on three spreads for a zine. Um, and so zines are, the zine, the term comes from the word fanzine, which are really specific books about any topic, but they've been used in activist practice and art. And we're kind of making a zine right now collaboratively, like everyone in the class um, that discusses imaginaries like labor and surveillance. And we have prompts for this, but our like our work can take any form and look any like any way we want it to. And that's really exciting and fun. And that's due Thursday, so I'm still thinking about that. Another course we are, as Peaks mentioned, analyzing a couple methods for equitable, ethical um, technology development and how that relates to our own practice. And in the coding, more coding course, we are doing what we want, but something along the lines of a feminist chatbot. So we get to code a little bit and all of this has kind of a creative aspect, technical aspect, and also like a personal, what we're doing with this course aspect. Yeah. Thank you, Lexi, for sharing. Is there anything you would like to add on that front peaks as well? Um, I don't know, only that no one's taken me up yet on, on trying to do something that's totally just like, don't follow the assignment brief and just do something, whatever you want to do. I, I, I don't know what'll happen <laughs> if someone tries to take, take me up on that. Amazing. Thank you, Pix. Lovely, so moving on, we've got this question here about what industries, jobs, or career paths do graduates get into after they finish their postgraduate program? This particular one in this case. Would you like to share? Um, we, this is the first year of the program, so we'll see. Uh, 
the in terms of what the current students are interested in, my my impression has been I think we have one person who might be thinking about uh, maybe doing a PhD. We have one person who's currently working in the tech industry in a kind of uh, sort of community organizer role and uh, might want to continue doing that kind of work or might want to um, move towards a more uh, like project oriented role. Um, one person I think might want to do like a startup kind of thing of some kind, uh, whether I don't know if it would be for profit or nonprofit or just some kind of uh, organizational effort. Um, I think there might be some students who just want to have a bit of an adventure. Uh, I personally have uh, connections to, of course, academics where, where I've been for a little while, but also uh, you know, quite a few people in the tech industry, some folks doing government work in uh, both the kind of tech development side as well as the, the regulatory or policy side, uh, people in think tanks, um, people doing nonprofit and organizing work. Uh, Amazing picks. Thank you for your answer. Lovely. So the next one we've got is about funding. So we received a question uh, specifically asking whether there is funding for EU students with settled status. Now here, I don't know if one like one of you could share something on that front and know something about maybe from like current students. But I believe otherwise this might be something that we need to um, just check with UAL and just provide like full you know, guidance on that because there's plenty already um, in place just to inform prospective students. So yes, I think we're gonna do that. Probably we're gonna just share the answer uh, directly to the person that requested this question, but also make sure that we also um, state on the website very clear guidance on that front so everyone knows what are the funding options for, for students there. All right. Amazing. Then we've got another one about working and or parenting during your studies and whether that is uh, something that is possible. So I was wondering maybe, um, I don't know if there's like a student going through um, just working responsibilities or parenting responsibilities at that course, but if there's anything that you would like to add on that front picks, that would be great. Maybe just talking a little bit about the workload and the sort of um, time expected for students to be involved in the course? Yeah, there's currently one student who is working part-time while, while taking the course. And uh, I've, I've tried to be as accommodating as, as I can for uh, helping that to be less of a lot. I think it is uh, still a lot to do both of those things, even even working part time. Um, parenting, I think, would be even more of a lot. Um, but yeah, that student has been getting along OK, I think. That's great to hear. Thanks, Peaks. Lovely. All right, so we are sort of um, coming to the end of the questions. We're, we still have a few more, so we're just going to go through them the next few minutes. The next one is about opportunities for work placements. Are there any in place for the MA Internet Equalities at the moment, Pix? Uh, not at the moment, but it's something I'm always working on trying to get set up. Amazing. Yeah, this is such a new course, so all the new exciting stuff is, is all happening. That's great. 
All right, and then something that, of course, we've already covered in the videos at the beginning, but most of the students are very interested in finding out more about, what are the teaching and technical resources that are available to CCI students? And here, I guess it would be lovely to hear from your own experience, Lexi, maybe, like how have you been using the resources at CCI? Here we could be talking about these spaces, maybe there's just the teaching resources, what have you maybe found beneficial or useful so far? Um, for me, the most beneficial and useful part of the CCI is the people or have been the people at the CCI. The cool machinery and technology that was in Chloe's video, I have never seen that before and I have no idea what a laser cutter is. So um, yeah, no, the people have been really great. The materials we get to go, like we get to use, the library. Um, yeah, but none of that fancy, I haven't really needed one of those fancy computers yet. Don't know what's gonna happen in the future in this course, but yeah. That's amazing, thanks Lexi. Is there anything you would like to add there, Pix, about teaching resources maybe? Um, it's true that physical computing hasn't been a, a focus of, of the degree program. Uh, although if you were interested in that, it, it certainly could be. Um, I don't know, I don't think I have anything else to add. Amazing. Lovely. And then we're just in the last one, I believe, which is actually about as well, like the people. So we received this question about what is the CCI community like here? So if you feel called to share something on that front, it would be great to hear from you to just finish up the session. Who is that directed towards? Sorry, TJ. You can start, Pix, if you want. OK. Uh, CCI community, what is it like? Hmm, well, um, I think it's a bit, uh, the CCI community is reasonably big. I think it's probably all, all people included, maybe around 100, 100 folks or more, including the undergrads and postgrads post and all different kinds of staff and folks. Uh, so. I don't know everyone in the community, um, and it's probably multifaceted. Uh, but my experience of it, uh, interacting mostly with the MA students and other staff members, is that it's uh, pretty chill. I think compared to um, like experiences that I've had of tech workplaces or of computer science, the more more kind of computer science -y departments and spaces, it uh, feels a lot more welcoming and a lot more, uh, like there are a lot of people who, who just are up to no good and having fun. So I've really enjoyed it. Thank you, Fix. Would you like to add something there, Lexi? Um, sure. So I've mostly only been with the, the master's program and the instructors that we've had. And it's been <laughs> really great to, oh, I see myself. Um, it's been really great to be a part of this community so far. Um, there's a lot of talk about changes we'd like, and we're, it's okay to bring that up in this community, it doesn't feel so um, like something you can't talk about. If, if we want to change something, if maybe it's not possible, but at least it's OK to talk about it. And I really like that, and I appreciate that. Um, yeah, it's small. And right now, with uh, the yeah pandemic, it's it's nice to be able to go in person because there's three of us in some courses and actually engage with some people responsibly, distance, whatever. Um, but it feels like, you know, a community because we're together, not just on screen. That's wonderful. Thank you, Lexi, for sharing your, your views and perspectives there. I mean, just to uh, sort of like finalize this conversation here as well, um, I wanted to just share that I've been like here at CCI since the like day one, really. And it's been really beautiful to see how 
the space has attracted just so so many welcoming wonderful and talented um peeps around the world just to like contribute to the conversations and the topics that we all care about really as humans and as practitioners so yeah it's been very inspiring to just like see so many students resonating with that and so many professionals and researchers and advocates really willing to contribute in in what matters to us because yeah, we're here to change the world for the better. And I think that really shows with um, everyone's discussions and conversations and the sort of work that they all produce. So with that, I'm just gonna thank you, Pix and Lexi for taking part in this beautiful session today. It was wonderful to hear from your perspectives and your approaches um, to, to what you're contributing to CCI. And with that, I believe we've made it to the end of this session. And just gonna say thank you everyone who joined us on this open day online session today. I hope it was insightful, that it was useful and that all, the, all of your questions about CCI and the MA in Senate Equalities were answered. If you have any other questions, our general CCI email is cci at arts.ac.uk. So please feel free to reach out to us with any queries that you have after the event and we'll do our best to get back to you as soon as we can and that's pretty much everything so we look forward to hopefully receiving your applications and meeting you in real life very soon and if not we'll hopefully share spaces online in the future somewhere in the world and the universe <laughs> thanks everyone thank you pix thank you lexi take care have a lovely afternoon bye <laughs>